are the self that makes the decisions. It's like you volunteered for a day in the slums. It would be ridiculous to resent that decision and say that you prefer to work on Fifth Avenue. By now, two things should be clear about challenging lives. Number one, our souls are not masochists. We only choose pain when it serves a purpose on our path of development. It must teach us how to stop suffering in the future, or how to better appreciate peace and love. And number two, what feels like pain to our body, our avatar, is not necessarily a bad thing to our soul, the eternal one sitting on the couch playing this educational video game we call life. But none of us enjoys hardship, so let's look at how best to respond to the bumps in the road. Cannon reminds us that pain is meant to teach us to rise above pain, to overcome it. The danger is that we must not give power to the pain, not use it for comfort, sympathy, an excuse for an easier time or an out of difficulties. Even if pain can't truly hurt our soul in a lasting way, we can get addicted to it. And addiction makes it harder to make soul progress. It lowers our frequency. Newton too reminds us that soul development is a complex matter where we all progress by degrees, but the important thing is to recognize our faults, avoid self-denial, and have the courage and self-sufficiency to make constant adjustments in our lives. A goal for those on the earth plane is learning what is not perfect. The bad helps us understand the good, and lifetimes that efficiently help us gain understanding are the most sought after earth experiences. Cannon said no matter how far down a soul falls, there's always opportunity to pull ourselves out of it through hard work and commitment. The lesson is to strive toward perfection, not to be perfect, which isn't possible on the earth plane anyway. Casey also knew that suffering wasn't for punishment or shame in this realm of trial of body and mind. Rather, a life event that looks like a failure may be the catalyst for a leap of progress by the soul. Our physical setbacks cause us to look inward, while our achievements are what cause us to neglect introspection. Casey also thought that our drive for competition and our tendency to compare our worthiness with others defeats our compassion and stymies soul progress. So we should look for opportunities for growth from our challenges. Newton spoke with someone who was crippled as a child due to an accident. She recalled an inner voice before the accident that said, it's an opportunity, don't wait any longer, take the fall, this is what you wanted, it's the best course of action. As a result, she became a better listener, thinker, and writer. She told us that, even as a victim, we are beneficiaries because it is how we stand up to failure and duress which really marks our progress in life. Sometimes, one of the most important lessons to learn is just to let go of the past. To get out of the funk of blame, Casey challenges us to take responsibility for our own growth. Don't blame parents, the government, terrorists, DNA, the economy, etc. The essential question is what can we do right now, considering the limitations, challenges, and hurdles in our lives? And recall Casey dying in 1945 did the bulk of his work during the Great Depression and two world wars, so he and his clients were no strangers to the difficult environments with many parties to blame. In other words, things have always been tough, and that's by design. But what about when we do need a little extra help? <laughs>